Well, how is it going, everybody? And looks like my mic isn't working. How about that? Oh, no, we're good. We're good to go. All righty. Welcome back, everybody. How's it going? William Stewart here with the Bullet Shooting Podcast. Proud, honored, thrilled to be joined by this Mr. Man here, Nick Georgeson of the Bull Shot Darts. How's it going, buddy? Doing good. Uh, thanks for having me on here. I'm looking forward to it. Really excited. Well, I feel like I got to get the jitters out. It's been a while since I've been doing this. What an awkward opening. How about that? Oof. Oof. <laughs> Oof. Let's just get it out there. Let's just I'm get right it there out with there. You. <laughs> <laughs> no, right? No kidding. No kidding. Hey, it's. It, I'm thrilled to be back with the Bull Shooting Podcast here. It's been a little while since we've done it. Uh, I feel like I, I got to get back into the flow of things here, but honestly, man, it, it, I'm, I'm honored to be joined by you, you because you've been doing a lot of great content on uh, YouTube, kind of jumping on over to the Facebook side of things, which is, I'm nice. Uh, I, 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 it's nice to see, honestly, because um, the more that you can do um, on both platforms, the more people that are going to see your content and the, the farther it's going to go. What do you say? Yeah, uh, thank you for the positive words. I appreciate it. Uh, so I've been doing a lot of YouTube, but I know that there's a lot more dark players on Facebook. But like, I don't know, I felt like I would have oversaturated if I was just posting my stuff everywhere. But the last like month or so, I was like, you know what, I do need to post this everywhere. So things have been doing a lot better since I've been expanding to the different platforms. So uh, really excited about it. Uh, yeah, you, you've been really doing really well. I mean, uh, honestly, just taking a quick uh, peek here at your uh, at what you've been doing with uh, Bullshot, I mean, it's, it's kind of incredible. I'll take a quick peek at what you what you got going on here, um, just on your YouTube platform. You got 11,000 subscribers, which is which is uh, awesome, honestly. I mean, uh, just taking a quick glance, uh, you really got a great branding there. The logo is really impressive. Um, I'm and look at that handlebar mustache. I gotta say, I was just gonna say, I, I miss my mustache. <laughs> What an incredible stash, my guy. What an incredible stash. No, I mean, and honestly, it's a great brand. Um, it's perfect for uh, for darts. Um, and honestly, I mean, most of your videos, just taking a quick glance here, uh, for those that are joining us on Facebook and at YouTube, we also do uh, a little um, after audio session on, on Spotify and other platforms, so you can check that out for those that are uh, viewing afterwards. But I mean, you got uh, I mean, 200,000 views on this popular videos, another one that's almost got 200,000 views. Your content's kind of, it, it, it's, it's taken off, man. I mean, it, it, the, the reason why though is because you're using beneficial content. You're, you're master your throw, instantly improve your darts. I mean, a uh, little stuff like that, and you're a quality shot as well. So people are going to listen to a quality shot Thank and you. improve their game. Yeah. Um, what, what, I mean, what are your thoughts? Where did you come up with the name Bull Shot? Um, what was your? Uh, how, how did it start? So it was maybe like two months in the lockdowns and everything. Uh, yeah, I was just bored. I'm a teacher, so like I was at home. My workload was super small because schools had never dealt with anything like that before. It's like I need something to fill my time. And uh, so I decided I was going to do YouTube and then it just kind of went from there. You know, I'm a career teacher, so teaching is just one of my biggest passions. Darts is another huge passion of mine. So, you know, it's just cool that I could put the, put the two together and, you know, help grow the sport of darts. Uh, I just I love darts. I want to see it grow. I know that there's so many dart players out there and I kind of like want to help them get better, get the confidence to come out and play because, you know, I just feel like a lot of people that play darts at home might not know what it's like at a dart tournament. They might be intimidated. They might not think they're good enough. So that's why I also talk about, you know, my experience at tournaments too. So hopefully they can relate to that and understand that it's not so intimidating. And because once you get out to the dart community, it's addicting. You're going to want to keep coming out. So that's just going to bring more people to the sport and yeah, just help it grow. So, uh, just doing my best to do that. <laughs> well, that's, that's the great thing, honestly, is that you're, 
you're catering to not only the new players, but you're also catering to those savvy veterans and those maybe inexperienced players that have been playing for a little while that want to gain some knowledge to help them along the way. I mean, it's really impressive what you're doing. And when you're talking about kind of, I wanted to do this for the game, I mean, it's kind of the same aspect as me. I was kind of like, oh, I wanted to do this because there was no really professional level streamers out there anymore that could go out there and, and show off the amateur side of the game. And that was kind of the 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 aspect that kind of grabbed onto me and i mean uh when i when i saw you doing your con i was like or your content i was like man this guy's i think me and him are kind of like-minded in what we're thinking here you just want to grow the game and see it and see it get better along the way i mean it, it's yeah great i felt stuff. the same when i saw you start you know doing all the streams and usa darts taking off like that made me so excited and so and now to see where you have grown like it's just so good for the sport and it's just awesome you know that there's people out there that are trying to make darts grow because it's not going to grow unless we're out there helping push it so Correct. i absolutely love what you're doing too i watch all the streams when i can well that's why i loved uh, hearing you last week a uh, quick little shout out father's uh, day family frenzy is where i got to meet you uh, last week for the first time and that was a fun one uh you actually did pretty well in there you're quite the player you're three time consecutive uh, Dart Player Chicago champion, so I wanted to mention that. And then last week, you come to the Father's Day Family Frenzy, and, uh, uh, well, clean house. Get first get first place in the 501 uh, Frenzy, which was pretty impressive, I must say. What do, you, what do you think? Yeah, that was an amazing event. I was so excited that Jeremy did that event because a lot of soft tip is just a lot of throwing at the bullseye. There's the loser starts thing. There's a lot of uh, short format stuff. So the fact that it was split bowl and double out, that's my game. Like I love steel tip 501. So it was basically steel tip on a soft tip board, long format, uh, alternating start. So I thought that was incredible. I hope to see a lot more of that in soft tip moving forward. Um, and yeah, it just feels good to hit a lot of 180s. And, you know, it's easier to hit a 180 on the soft tip board. So it just helped boost my confidence uh, the more that tournament went on. And then by the time I got to the finals, like I just, you know, I, I talk about mindset, positive mindset all the time. Like by the time the finals rolled around, like, I don't know, I just felt like my darts were magnetic and it just felt so good. So it's helped my confidence a lot. I, I saw your recent video, the uh, uh, my best soft tip weekend, which is a pretty good <laughs> one, I must say. I, I was thoroughly impressed by that one. Uh, yeah, Steve Hilger tuning in. I, uh, I think he, he was in the uh, booth with me for a little bit. And uh, he mentioned that it was good to, to, to kind of get people into that steel tip mentality, kind of the transitional mindset. So uh, I think we'll see a lot more of that, which is, which is gonna be nice. So I did wanna mention real quick, if you did have any questions for Nick and or I, put that Q and uh, dot and, and put out your question. And when we're done, I'll, I'll quickly go through the Facebook uh, comments and see where we're at on those. I just wanted to mention that before we get too underway, because some people may have some questions for you, but uh, well, working into the nitty gritty things here, I wanted to kind of get on with, with things as the U.S. Masters, man, I got to tell you, that was a pretty fun one. We didn't recap that uh, on our last one, so we wanted to recap it now. Uh, you got to watch that from home. What did you think? Uh, incredible. I couldn't have been more happy with what happened because we need more of that here in the USA. Um, you know, they announced Madison Square Garden what last year, like we missed out on it when we were supposed to have it. Uh, so the fact that they were able to hold on to it, recover and put on the event that they did, like it was just incredible seeing the North Americans on the big stage. The crowd was amazing. Like they're, you know, all the good chance, all the fun. Uh, I'm really sad I missed out on it, but it looked like so much fun. I really wish I could be there or could have been there. Uh, well, I, I gotta, I gotta be there. And let me tell you, it was, a blast it was a uh, it was honestly a thrill i got to do the meet the players event uh, walk the venue and kind of just be there in general so starting with the meet the players event, we got to do you know f four interviews we got to do mvg or interview mvg Gerwin price johnny clayton and uh peter wright which was honestly a thrill all of them were, were great people um and it was just it was an amazing experience and then when you see everybody fallon shurik um james wade uh, and, and, and the other two, two people that were there. I mean, you get just so overwhelmed. G Gary Anderson and, uh, oh, come on, help me out, Nick. 
Help me uh, out. <laughs> we're lost. We're lost. Are we missing a name? <laughs> we're missing we're missing one name. Uh we'll, we'll get it. We'll uh, get Gerwin, it. Gerwin, Michael Smith. <laughs> Gerwin? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, we'll, we'll 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 get it. We'll get it. We'll get it. Hey, we'll get can it. you blame us? It's been it's been a, at least a solid three weeks, and I've had three weeks of streaming <laughs> in there too. So just play it right. Somebody will help us out here in the in the chat, I'm sure, and, and blame us and talk bad on us in the in the meantime. But yeah, Colin, it was Joe Colin. No, it, he wasn't there. He wasn't there. Actually, we'll get a C here in just a minute because I've actually got a video. So how about let's just go ahead and play that in the background, oh. and then we'll be able to tell you. What do you say? Kudos on that one, huh? Yeah. You know, I put this together, and it's just kind of a highlight reel of, of, of my perspective on the weekend. So we'll go ahead and throw that up. There's a little bit of background music, but we'll still be able to talk about it. So, uh, yeah, here we go. Yeah, we got to do the uh, – there it is, uh, Michael Smith. Oh, yeah, how do we forget Michael Smith? That's who we forgot. Michael Smith. Look at that. Yeah, a little, a little pretty cool perspective here. Gates walk, walking right next to us. And then uh, getting to see him uh, dance a little bit was fun. Gates had one of my favorite darts moments ever at this tournament. I'll talk about it when this video <laughs> finishes up. <laughs> oh, we got to hear about that one. Yeah, look at that crowd, man. i got to tell you, it was electric. And here's Gates uh, with his winning dart here. Look at these, look at these young kids here, jumping up and down. Love that. How awesome! I mean, the incredible. Crowd, the crowd was just amazing, and I don't know if you saw it from um, b from behind the cameras point of view. I mean, it was really a, a really rowdy crowd, and these guys were booing when Gerwin hit this shot. That's why yeah. he turned around and said, "Come on, <laughs> what do you what do you got, folks?" And here we go. This was this was pretty cool. Man, I gotta tell you, that was a really cool moment when it was yelling. That gives me USA, goosebumps seeing that. USA. Oh man, I gotta tell you what. Well, yeah, it was it was fun to throw that yeah. up there, and I'm kind of looking over my shoulder, checking out all the Facebook comments if if you got something in there for us. But um, yeah, I mean, from start with to meet the players, and it was great to meet all those players and kind of get their perspective. Um, on on being there, um, I asked Gary Anderson. I said, "Hey, what'd you like better, Vegas or uh, uh, or New York?" And he goes, "I got to be honest, I played the slots a lot, and I like the tables." Yeah, <laughs> that's what he said. But yeah, I, they, everybody loves that. Everybody loves yeah, that. Yeah, Vegas was awesome. I went there in 2019, I think it was, and that was my first time ever in Vegas. So it was my first time. Well, just in that atmosphere and being able to play darts in there, and it's like walking around the casinos, like. See Michael Smith playing crabs. You see Gerwin Price. I, I sat down and played poker with Gerwin Price. Like it was just crazy. <laughs> right, right, exactly. It's kind of surreal when you. I mean, right when I got out of the cab and, and walked up to the hotel, I look up and there's MVG. I was like, geez, it's kind of surreal. But I mean, they're just kind of hanging out, doing their thing. Uh, probably enjoying a little bit of time where not everybody notices them, just a couple people, but I guarantee you there's still quite a few. But, uh, I mean, Lin yeah. uh, Leonard Gates wins the North American Championship. He's going to be at the Alley Pally. Congrats to him. Um, I mean, he got the job done. He had some good scoring power. Uh, did have a couple mistakes or two. Of course, people are calling him out on that. But, I mean, that, <laughs> it's going to happen. But he got the job done. That's that's what matters, right? Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, if Hey, it might be the wrong way to go, but if you get the out, it's the right dart. And that's what I was going to say. One of my favorite moments is because he made the miscount. I forgot who he had the initial miscount, but he busted his score. And then the final dart he wanted on the double 13, which is the mistake that he made before. And right before he threw it, like he turned around to the crowd and he was like, hey, I know where this double is. <laughs> what was and then he goes up there and wins the thing with the double 13. <laughs> what was funny is I almost included that little section in the highlight reel because I caught oh, yeah. it on my GoPro, <laughs> but uh, oh, I didn't include it. I didn't include it. It was just kind of one of those moments. It was like, yeah, let's, let's keep it. Let's keep it. Let's keep it to a small margin here. Yeah. But uh, yeah, overall, <laughs> Michael Smith, he lifts the title at the U.S. Masters. Congrats to him. Uh, and he kind of showed some emotion there saying what it meant to him to win at uh, Madison Square Garden. Uh, and he really had an incredible month. He had like three or four titles underneath his belt for the whole month. Uh, really impressive stuff, um, I must say. Uh, for me, what, yeah, it's um, a, go ahead. I was just going to say it was a big moment for him because Michael Smith is one of those players. He's so young and has so much talent. Uh, he's been in, what, the World Championship Finals two times and has come up short. But I... 
his last one against Peter Wright, I don't feel like Peter necessarily beat him. I feel like Michael Smith lost it because he was missing so many doubles that you just cannot miss. And even Peter made the comment after it, like, Michael, work on your doubles. Because yeah. I think Smith is notorious for saying that he doesn't practice doubles. And then, of course, in the World Championship Finals, the doubles is what really hurt him there. Well, I think he's had like something like six or seven or even eight major major appearances and just major final appearances and just hasn't crossed that line. I think eventually he's got to he's got to either fall over or jump over the line. It's just, it's just what happens first. What happens first? You just don't know. Yeah. But uh, moving on, MVG wins another Premier League title. How about that? Take a look at that guy there. Kudos to the PDC on this one. Uh, Kaz Bodinsik, I think that's how you say it, but we tried. We tried nonetheless. Six Premier League titles for MVG. That's got to feel fantastic. What do you think? Yeah, I was actually surprised he ended up getting it because Michael Van Gerwen's darts have just been so wavy lately, up and down. Um, so... The fact that he was able to get through that crowd and win it was awesome. And then it's like we see those glimpses of, you know, prime Michael Van Gerwen, and you wonder, like, all right, is he here to stay? So it's kind of like you don't know what you're going to get when he plays, which kind of makes it a little bit more exciting. And then uh, one thing, too, that's kind of interesting, I saw, I forgot who it was, but I saw someone mention, like, by the end of Michael Van Gerwen's career, the amount of Premier League title wins that he has Will it be enough to compete for the GOAT conversation of Phil Taylor with all of his world championships? So that's also something I found kind of interesting. Yeah, I found I, I saw that exact quote uh, that you were saying on Facebook, I think it was, but that's kind of a question. That is a question. In today's margins, I mean, everybody can just surprise you. I mean, we saw it, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, in the Dutch Masters. I mean, just everybody can <laughs> slang some arrows when, and, and pull it out of anywhere. I mean, anybody can have their game, and it just, unfortunately, is just better than yours every once in a while. So, I mean, that's, that's right. the thing. It, it, it's kind of a good question on that. Could it possibly be better? I mean, when Phil Taylor was on, he was on, and there was really nobody that could really touch him when he was going. But in today's world... It's it's the so the, the the amount of tournaments they play and the back to back and forth just grind of travel, man. I I tell you, I don't know, I don't know. It's kind of yeah one of those things. I mean, I think Phil will always be the best player to ever play the game, but it's a good it's a good yeah. it's a good question, good question. It's kind of similar to like the whole. I mean, I don't watch much basketball, but you know, people talk about Michael Jordan, LeBron James. And like, if there's two different eras there. You got the player that dominated won all the championships, and you got the modern player who might not have all the championships, but still in the conversation. So like, Van Gerwen will never come close to his world championship record or title, number of titles, but all of his other accolades, will that be enough to possibly put him over? But I agree, I think it's gonna be hard to <laughs> for anyone to get over Phil as far as the, for the GOAT conversation. You are correct, but. For finals, for finals notes here for MVG, uh, 99.1 average, uh, five, uh, five 180s, and a checkout percentage of 47.8. Compared to Joe Cohen, he had a 99.36, three 180s, and a checkout percentage of 50%. And man, what a nail biter final! 11-10 there uh, over Cohen, and you saw just the sheer heartbreak. Um, and, and just, I mean, the, the heart-wrenching thing for me was just seeing Cohen's face and they zoomed in on it. And I was just like, oh, my goodness. Why would you do that yeah. to that young man? But yeah, I was gonna, <laughs> that was going to eat at him for a while. And that was like literally the, the littlest of margins that he missed. Yeah, that's the crazy thing with darts. And that's one of the things I absolutely love about it. You can throw like such good darts, but it all comes down to that double. Like, you don't play four quarters, game over. You don't play nine innings, game over. You don't play three periods, game over. You have to hit game-winning darts, so it adds just a completely different pressure, and sometimes all you get is that one dart to win the match, and when you miss it, yeah, it'll just stick with you. I mean, I've, I've missed one dart in blind draws, and it'll eat me up for the night. I'll go home and practice that double. <laughs> uh, so I couldn't imagine you know, being on that big of a stage and just missing that one dart. 
Now that one dart will eat at you. That one dart will eat at you indeed. But I wanted to talk about some tournament averages real quick because this is kind of an interesting factoid here. MVG had, was number one in tournament averages, 99.20. Um, he had uh, 31 games overall and three titles, um, or, or lifts of the titles, as they say. Johnny Clayton came in at second, 97.98, 36 games, four titles. Uh, Peter Wright, third. Michael Smith in fourth. German Price in fifth, James Wade in sixth, listen to this, Gary Anderson, and then Joe Cullen. And Joe Cullen had a tournament average of 92.14 and 26 games with two titles. So that just goes to show you right there, it doesn't matter your tournament average. At the end of the day, I mean, if you're on a hot streak and it comes down to finals time and you're just feeling that right kind of energy level, you can really put it on and possibly win a Premier League title. Yeah, I mean, I always say, like, if you have two people with the same amount of talent, it all comes down to that mindset and who can bring out the best of those darts. So all these guys are just so talented. Like, it's sickening how talented these guys are at darts. Um, so it's just a matter of who's able to bring out those best darts and all about timing. Like, timing is key in darts. So well, I was we... so happy for him that he made the finals because I'm a big Colin fan. Like, I, I love seeing the younger guys come up. Uh, so I, I love Colin. Whenever he wins, it always makes me happy. Which is, you know, what's funny is younger guys come up. You know, him, uh, him and MVG are the exact same age, 32, 31. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, how about that? Isn't that scary? Yeah. Isn't that scary when you think about it? It's like MVG is really kind of young, and he's still, he's still been at that elite level for quite some time. And, uh, I mean, yeah. He yeah, was, since he was, what, like 15? <laughs> yeah, yeah, youngster. When he, back when he had hair. Back when he had hair. But, right. <laughs> uh, moving on, we'll get into the World Cup of Darts here. Um, you know what? Uh, Simon Whitlock finally gets over the line with Damon Hedda. And real quick, before we talk about it, how about we listen to Simon real quick? Because i got to tell you, folks, this is just a prequel of our interview that we had with him just a few days ago. We'll get into that now. World Cup champion now. He had a run with Paul Nicholson back in 2012. What a heartbreaker that was. It must feel nice to finally uh, get one get one yeah. and lift the title with Damon. What do you say? Yeah, definitely. Feels like the monkey's off my back now, and uh, the world's my oyster now, as they say. <laughs> the main thing, if you got support from your family, because um, I know, like, here in the States, a lot of people are still kind of transitioning. Do we make the move? Do we not? I think that significantly helped you throughout your career um, kind of to get the success that you've had, the consistency on a, on a daily basis. Um, what do you think? I mean, I noticed you do some work. I'm all over the place here, but you do some work with Southampton Dart Series um, just kind of as a, as, a, as a side gig to try to keep your game going. Do you think that's a big um, step for you to kind of keep the consistency going? Yeah, definitely. I also play uh, on a Wednesday night, my local league in Waterloo, where I live, and uh, that's really helped me. You know, I get a lot of confidence from winning those tiny little tournaments, but there's some great dart players there, and they're tough. And, and if you can win those, then you can definitely go on and win bigger things. Well, there we go. A little uh, quick prequel of our interview that's going to be coming out tomorrow at uh, I think about 2 p.m. Central, so just a for you guys that are wanting to know at home and, and wanting to check that out, check it out tomorrow. But uh, yeah, I mean, Simon is one of four players to play in every World, uh, World Cup. How about that? That's, that's kind of crazy to think. The other, the other uh, three are Mince Rosulovic, Brennan Dolan, and William O'Connor. Kind of crazy yeah, fact. That, that's awesome. <laughs> that's why it's so cool that he finally got the win. You know, Simon is one of those players that's just been around for so long. I absolutely love Simon Whitlock. Uh, so to see him get the win was incredible. And I mean, yeah, I feel like there's a lot of talk about Simon winning his first World Cup and all that. But Damon Hetta, what he did at the World Cup in the finals, like he whitewashed Gerwin Price and then he beats Johnny Clayton 4-2. Uh, I know Wales wasn't the number one seed going into the World Cup. But in my opinion, I thought they were the strongest team. And what Damon Hetta did in that finals was just, oh, dirty. He mm -hmm. did them dirty. <laughs> it, he, it really was. And, I mean, honestly, I couldn't remember 
who it was. I don't know if they combined for this or if it was just Damon, but it was a 109 average in, in the quarterfinals win. Um, and that alone stands like, I think, top three, top five in, in best World Cup uh, performances. So I, that was really wow. impressive. And I mean, honestly, um, when you go back to 2012 and, and just look at the clips of that, they lost, man, what a heartbreaker that was to England. And, and you could see it on uh, on Simon and, and Paul Nichols' face. You could even see it on Phil Taylor and uh, Adrian Lewis's face. Just the back and forth, just like, oh my, is somebody gonna hit this this double or what? I gotta tell you, it was, it was great to see him get a line and it was great to talk to him about it. I'm, I'm really thrilled to kind of put this out there for everybody to see. Yeah, I'm excited to watch that full interview. I think it's so cool how you guys at USA Darts are getting these interviews with the overseas players. You know, what you did in New York and now what you're doing with Simon and, you know, other players moving forward. I think that's going to help so much. Just get these players' names out more, you know, in the United States and North America. So absolutely love that. Yeah, well, kudos to uh, uh, to Winmau and to uh, Modus Modus League. Uh, they're they're kind of the ones that helped us out with that interview. Uh, Phil Bar uh, Bars was one uh, one from Online Darts that really helped us kind of uh, put everything together. So shout out to him um, in the background. Uh, but yeah, moving on to our Dart of the Month. I wanted to mention that from A to Z Darts uh, the Fantasia Threes for uh, Trish Gretzik. June Dart of the Month, so only a few days left to snag these barrels and get a uh, free goodie bag as well. So head on over to a-to-zdarts.com and grab yours today. But hey, how about we move into the CDC weekend number two recap. This one was in uh, Cambridge, Ontario. Um, yeah, it was uh, kind of interesting to see right off the start. There was some travel issues with a lot of players getting there. Um, did you hear the same? Yeah, I felt like my Facebook feed was full of travel issues. Uh, every time a big dart weekend rolls around, and I think I saw pic people posting pictures of snow even. So I don't know where they might have been in the world, but uh, yeah, it's a lot of issues. So that stinks because, you know, these CDC events, you know, these are the big events that we need our players to really be showing up at. Yeah, you're correct there. And, and kind of just, just to say it right off the bat, I mean, the attendance really wasn't quite as as well as what I'd hoped for. Um, I think we were around 39, 40 players for the weekend. Um, but I mean, you, you gotta think, most of your tour players are from the US. I think it's 25, 75%. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong there. But uh, I mean, the numbers definitely are hefty in the US favor. And, and I mean, I mean, not to call you out, you're a tour card holder, but just kind of the travel situations just didn't work out for you. And that's, I think, a lot of players endured that um, with kind of still the restrictions that may be in place and whatnot. Uh, I didn't really look into that, so I wouldn't know. But um, yeah, it's kind of unfortunate, but it is, it is what it is. That's why we have four stops, two in U.S. and two in Canada. I'm glad to see those kind of, the, the still the, the need to or the uh, desire to have the um, the blended schedule where people can play in both it's nice to have that back I will say yeah I think next year you know when those restrictions are eased up I think those Canadian events will definitely have more people at because like you said most of our players are from the USA um, so it's definitely more traveling for us which I'm not complaining about you know it is what it is I want to play on the pro tour I'm gonna do what I got to do to play on it like unfortunately this weekend yeah. due to restrictions and stuff I wasn't able to go but um, I think next year these numbers will go up especially in those Canadian events yeah well, at least I'm hoping so traveling is tough in Canada let's be honest too I mean you're talking a lot a lot of space there and uh, you know it, it it's definitely a different different factor up there I've heard than than here in the US so that's another thing to count into but uh, so far Jacob Taylor wins event number four 89 average for him on the day uh, seven at six win over Danny Baggish 88.7 average um, uh, compared to Danny's 90 in the uh, average uh, in the final uh, so a really good final there um, David Cameron wins event number five and number six. So uh, good to see him continuing uh, on with his form from the uh, Seniors Masters. He didn't quite have the outcome he would have hoped for in uh, New York, but hey, you know what? He's still, still, still 
hanging on to that bad boy in the end and, and continuing on. Yeah. I think it's going to be good for him in the in the long run. What do you say? Yeah, definitely. I've been a big fan of David Cameron. The first time I'd ever seen him throw was the 2018 Music City Classic. And 2018 was the first time I ever started traveling for darts. So it was the first time really being around that caliber of players. And I got on a practice board with him and I was watching this guy throw and I was just like jaw dropped. I'm like, oh my gosh, like I've never seen anything like this in person. Like I've seen it on TV, but it's so much different when you see it in person. Like I was just blown away at how good he was shooting. And then he went on to win the uh, the match play, the CDC match play at the Music City Classic. So he was definitely a player I've been so excited to watch moving forward. But when everything shut down, down then obviously, you know, there was no dart. So he was like probably my one of my top players. And I was excited to see where he's going to go once we're able to start you know, playing darts again. And mm -hmm. yeah, what he's been doing has been absolutely incredible. I think, I feel like when they talk about the best players in North America, you know, we talk about Danny Baggish, uh, Jeff Smith, obviously like the PDC tour card holders, you know, we've had staple names, but I feel like not many people mention David Cameron. I feel like now they are, I feel like he's got to be in that top discussion and he's just proving it over and over this year. Oh, he's playing on the, I mean, on, at the Lakeside stage for I can't remember how long, but it, it was a, it was a matter of consecutive years there for, for a while, and and I mean, yeah, he's been a solid shot for quite some time. I mean, let's be honest here, him and him and uh, Jeff Smith paired up for I think uh, either a title or a Silver's title in in a WDF pairs event. It was really an impressive display. I can't remember off the top of my head or honestly was prepared prepared for that one, but yeah, I mean, he's been a been an impressive. Uh, Doris player for quite some time, and it's nice to see him kind of cashing in. And I'm, I, I think he's just under 55, in, in, in the 50 to 55 range, so just eligible for that senior tour. But honestly, you look at the successes of Peter Wright, um, and he's, what, 52, 53? So who knows? Who knows what could happen? Yeah, which is crazy. I never knew how old David Cameron was. Then I saw his age pop up, and I'm like, he can't be that old. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's scary. <laughs> It's scary. You never yeah. believe it. And like Leonard Gates, I think he's 52 or something like that. So, yeah. I mean, honestly, it's nice to see him succeed and get over that line and, and get to the Alley Pally stage as well. But Same. I'm so excited to see him on the big stage. He has so much talent. Like, I'm just so excited to see him do more in the steel tip game. Like, he's, do he's, he's done a lot, but I feel like there's so much more he can do. So mm -hmm. it'll be really exciting to see once he gets more and more experience on that big stage. I agree. I agree. I mean, a uh, soft tip experience is one thing, but then uh, big, big, uh, big stage uh, European crowds is, is a totally different thing. So nice to see him get success. Well, moving on to a big stage European crowd, the Dutch Masters uh, happened this weekend. And let me tell you, wow, was it an interesting first round as six of the top eight players were out in round one. MVG, Michael Smith, Gunnar Price, Fallon Shurik, Peter Wright, and Johnny Clayton all bowed out in the first round. And that just shows you the talent level that's in, uh, well, in those Dutch counterparts for some of these guys. Yeah, that was crazy. Like, I, I unfortunately don't get to watch as much starts as I would like, but I always keep up with it, you know, on Facebook and stuff. And every time I open up Facebook, it was like, Michael Van Gerwen, eliminated. Uh, <clears throat> Johnny Clayton eliminated, Van Gerwen eliminated. I was like, I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. But at the same time, like, I absolutely love that because darts is one of those sports where, for me at least, there's no players I dislike. I generally like all the players, but there's certain players I like to see win more. So seeing that underdog come back and win, I absolutely love. So it was nice to see those top guys get bumped early, even though I love them too. <laughs> Well, I mean, honestly, the names that beat him, I mean, I think most of them had two cards, honestly. It just shows you kind of back to that mentality of what we were talking about when the Phil Taylor MVG reference. I mean, it just goes to show you, honestly, any given day, anybody can beat anybody. It's just how, how, how hot you are. If, you're, if your hand's hot and you're hitting doubles and hitting the big scoring <laughs> triples, I mean, phew, tough to beat. Tough to beat. Yeah, yeah it is. Exactly. Yeah. It's all about that timing. Yeah, exactly what it is. So, uh, Dimitri Vandenberg coming out with the title, though, over uh, Dirk Van Dijvenbode, 8-2 with an impressive 104 average in the final. Um, and then a one, he threw a 103 average versus Danny Knopper in the semis. 99 average for the tournament overall. 
And uh, folks, that's his second World Series title in a row for uh, Dimitri Vandenberg. Uh, just, I, I knew he was special a few years ago, but uh, I think he's starting to prove it. He's starting to prove it. What do you think, Nick? Yeah, I love watching him play. Uh, I, I base a lot of my favorite dart players off like how they look physically when they throw, and watching him throw is just a thing of beauty. Um, I love how calm and cool collected he is. The crowd was pretty rough. Uh, I know people have always been loud and obnoxious in the crowd, and it's like, I get it, but like, there's a lot of obnoxious whistling that's just blatantly trying to throw the players off that I think is a bit much. But uh, Dimitri is just one of those players, I feel like he's just stone cold the whole time. It doesn't even affect them. Uh, and his throw is so pretty. And what he did so good is that every single match that he had, he got better and better and better. And that's what you have to do in tournaments like this is, you know, you have to continually get better every single match. So every uh, every match that he had, his numbers continually got better, which is great. You are certainly correct there. I think he threw a 94 in his opening match. So he definitely needed to improve from that. But I think he saw the door swing wide open when he saw, you know, those six heavy hitters, per se, um, kind of bow out of, the, <laughs> out of the event in that first round. He was kind of like, okay, all right, I'll just uh, slide my way on into this one. Um, but it was nice yeah. to see, it was nice to see Dirk Van uh, Divebo to uh, get into the final, the uh, Aberdeen, as they say, the eggplant man. Uh, good, yeah, good, I absolutely good love Dirk. <laughs> yeah, it, it's kind of funny, him, his walk on. I think all the Dutch, I'm starting to learn all these Dutch people love their, uh, love their uh, techno jams or heavy, heavy metal this pump yeah. music. Man, whew. Yeah. Quite a few of those songs there. He's super entertaining, uh, and Darts needs characters like that. So I think it, I think he's great for the sport. He's so entertaining to watch. And yeah, I absolutely love his walk on. Like I'll go on YouTube and just watch his walk on to get pumped up to practice some darts and just get ready. <laughs> and then yeah, then Jules comes out with a similar song at the at the Madison Square Garden, which I absolutely loved his walk on too. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they, they were, there's some goodies there. There's some goodies there, let me tell you. But moving on, <laughs> uh, it was nice to uh, watch the women's series this weekend. I enjoyed uh, watching that one as there was some big money, some big, uh, some big circumstances on the line here as these ladies uh, towed the hockey this weekend for four events. Um, and it was, I was a little bit surprised, honestly, by one of these competitors. Um, but uh, they were all fighting for eight spots. There was eight, in the top eight got, are qualified for the uh, Women's World Match Play, which is a new event uh, the PDC is putting on. It's at Blackpool. It's July 24th. Uh, that's going to be a one-day event. So uh, for those that didn't know about that one, it uh, should be should be fun. Should be interesting. Um, but yeah, it was interesting to me that Trina Gulliver, um, she was actually. Um, in the event, uh, or, or qualif like in the top eight um, to start the weekend. And uh, I don't know if she just wasn't interested in playing in the match play or if maybe something held her back. I'm not sure, but she elected not to play this weekend. So that was kind of weird that, that she didn't play this weekend when she's, I mean, she's had so many, um, so many wins in her past. Maybe she just elected to, uh, not my cup of tea anymore. I'm not sure, but what what, what do you what do you think about that? Uh, I haven't heard anything about her dropping out. I mean, hopefully everything's okay. Uh, you know, hopefully nothing super unfortunate happened that's forcing her out. But uh, I think the PDC Women's Series is an awesome thing that they're putting on here because we do have a lot of really good female dart players. And once again, going back to growing the sport, we want as many people as possible coming. So I think what they're doing with the PDC Women's Series is opening up a lot of eyes of young girls that are like, hey, I wanna be a dart player when I get older. And I feel like we need more of that. So I absolutely love what they're doing with the Women's Series. And you know, I know Fallon Schrock is kind of, uh, I can't think polarizing person and you know, either love or hate her type thing, but I think she's so good for the sport of darts, and you know I always root for Fallon when she's playing. Uh, I'm I'm not booing her opponent, but you know I'm cheering for her because I think when she wins, darts wins. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, you know that's what we need. We need big wins for darts. And I know Ashton has been pretty dominant on this tour, which is awesome too because she's another name that 
should be much more well known. Yeah. Because Fal Fallon's kind of like the poster of the female darts, and she's great. I love her. But there are other really good female dart players that also deserve that spotlight with her. Mm -hmm. I, I, I agree with you on that one. And I think that Fallon's actually got a lot of slack from uh, a lot of individuals um, because she's in the World Series. And I think that, um, honestly, I, I enjoy having her in there because you never know. She can... She can spark fire one weekend, and I mean, last last year she won the. I think she took runner up, or or maybe even won the Nordic Masters. I, I can't remember uh, on that one. I think she was runner up, um, but still, I mean, that just shows you right there. I mean, it can be any anybody's weekend, and, and they can take the title. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think we're gonna see maybe Lisa, uh, maybe dabble in that role in the near future. I wouldn't be surprised in that one because Lisa, if you look at the Women's World Series rankings at the end, it was Lisa and Fallon, and I mean they were kind of neck and neck. I think Lisa was ended up being a couple couple thousand in prize money ahead of Fallon, but still, I mean, some impressive numbers to say the least um, from 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 Lisa Ashton and from Fallon. Yeah, and also, I mean, look at the World Championship. I forgot what year it was, but uh, you know, she beat Menzer Solovich. Like that is a huge win. I think he was ranked maybe 10th uh, at the time. So there's no doubt she can play. Is she handed certain things? I mean, maybe, and like, I, I can understand where people like would be upset about that. But at the end of the day, she's bringing more eyes to the sport, bringing more opportunities to the sport. And in the long run, what she's doing is just so good for the sport of darts. Well, I can assure you her media schedule was pretty insane uh, in New York. I can, <laughs> I, can, I can guarantee you on that one because that was one interview we just couldn't wrangle in as she was pretty, she was oh, pretty yeah. busy. But yeah, I wanted to give a big shout out to Lisa here, a big, big shout out to her. She's been one of the, uh, the individuals that uh, she, was on the, she was on the tour last year or for two years and unfortunately fell out. I'm interested to see how she feels about kind of going back to the amateur side of things and, and playing in the women's series and being a force in that. Um, so hopefully maybe we can get an interview with her in the near future. But I wanted to move on and kind of, uh, you know, name some other ladies here. Lorraine Wynn Stanley, uh, Aileen DeGraff, uh, Laura Turner. That name may sound familiar for some people. She's a PDC commentator. Um, so that's where that one name sounds familiar for some people. Uh, Rian Griffiths, um, Katie Sheldon, and Chloe O'Brien. So uh, the name that, 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 that kind of pokes out at me is Miss Katie Sheldon. This young lady is 18 years young. Uh, and this weekend, she earned her spot in this match play. She was sitting outside, and I think in 12th spot, and then she put in, uh, well, two semis and a top 16 as well as a top 32 this weekend and earned her spot into this match play. Pretty impressive from this young lady. Have you heard of her, Nick? Uh, I have not until we talked earlier today. Uh, I think that's absolutely incredible. I, I mean, I've talked about it, you know, the young players coming up, the future of our sport. And, you know, she's doing this at 18. Who knows what she's going to be at 20, 25, 30. You know, mm -hmm. we might see her in the World Championship Finals down the line if she keeps her mind to it and continues getting better. So it's really exciting for her and the future of darts. She's uh, She's got some youth titles underneath her belt. She actually played with Keen Berry a lot of times because she's she's from Ireland. So that's, that would be why um, her and Keen have played an awful, awful lot of tournaments together. Um, but, yeah, she's got an impressive talent pool around her. She's got Robin Byrne by her side, which is another – uh, young lady. I think she's a little bit older than Katie. I think she's maybe mid-20s. But uh, yeah, she's an impressive um, darts player as well. Um, so yeah, I think that, you know, the game's shifting towards these middle-aged players uh, and we're starting to see the game develop. I think uh, another individual while we're talking about youth, Mr. Luke Littler. And it's hard to call him Mr. when he's just 15 years young. <laughs> Um, but he looks like he's about 25 because he's got a full, I think a full <laughs> chew as well, but he's 15 years young and that, that is for, that is, that is a true statement. It's been checked on his ID. Um, he won the Welsh Open, um, not too long ago, which is a gold event for the WDF. And then this weekend he won the, uh, Romanian, Romanian Classic, 
which is a bronze event. He beat Jelly Klassen in the final with a 95 average, 5-1 win there. Man, the youngster's talented, buddy. Watch out for him. Yeah, that's crazy. It's I mean, it's almost like, you know, back when Van Gerwen was 15 playing with the big boys. I don't know if Littler or Littler is playing in these bigger events, uh, but I he definitely has the numbers that can compete with them and not just compete with them, but beat them too. I mean, we watched him take out that nine darter, like absolutely incredible. Like, how can you do that at 15? What do you, <laughs> I want to know what's the secret. <laughs> exactly. What is the secret? Cause the, the young man is just impressive. He's, he's, he's so talented and he's just got nothing, no fear at all. And it's crazy to see these young people. I mean, we see it with PJ Stewart, Joey Lana, who uh, I saw that, uh, Seth Stefano says Joey sweeps the Evolution Tour this weekend, so good for him. So another young man to watch out for. And Caden Anderson is another young man as well. I mean, the, the, the youth game, it's just it's becoming a younger person's game with the travel and, and the stamina to play this game. And, and, man, just fearless mentality as well is what these youngsters have, every single one of them. Yeah. The, the young talent... So that we have coming up here in North America is crazy because these guys do have that stamina. Um, you know, they play those morning events and then they come in and play the main events. They're throwing darts all day. And I feel like they just never slow down. And the future, like those guys in the evolution tour and then the junior tour that we also have with that, like when they come up and play with the big boys, it's scary how good they are and just, like I said, it's just crazy. Where are these guys going to be in five years from now if they keep their mind in it and, you know, are dedicated to getting better? Um, you know, we talk about we haven't had a American, uh, you, uh, someone from the USA win the world championship, and we talk about who might be the first player. You know, we got to look at those guys in our evolution tour and our junior tour because they're already competing with the top guys that we have here, and they're just going to continually get better. So, it's well, crazy. <laughs> I think that, uh, you know, Joey and, uh, and uh, PJ have the right support system. I mean, I talked to their parents, uh, both of them at uh, uh, Cherry Bomb when I was streaming the event there. And, and both, both the parents kind of push them to, to, to go play and to get out there and, and be involved in those events. You always see PJ and Joey making runs overseas to Europe and uh, playing in the, the bigger events against some more talented individuals. Nothing against the, the, the youth players, players here, but they're, they're, they're going and making runs for things. I think those individuals, like you said, could be here in the next five years. Do we see one or, or both with tour cards? That, that's a lot to put on someone's back, but it's very well possible that we see one or, or both with the tour card in the uh, next five to 10 years, I think. Yeah, and like a big thing too uh, with North American players is getting that big stage experience. Like the big stage experience is probably the most important thing. And in my opinion, is what holds back the North American players from playing better when they do play overseas. Because when I watch, you know, Danny Baggish, all those guys play here, their game is so much different than when they're overseas. And I think it comes down to the mindset and that big stage. The more comfortable we as you know, as a dark community in North America get comfortable with that, the better we're going to be. And these young kids are getting this, you know, before they're 20 years old. Yeah. So, like, it's just going to boost up their game that much more, getting all that great experience. Well, I talked with Danny Baggish at Seacoast last year, and I think he was, the, he was the one that said it to me. He said, I played the best darts of my life the past three months, and I just can't catch a break because it's, 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 you're in a new room with a bunch of people that know what they're doing rather than maybe a handful of players that know what they're doing. No, no, no offense to a bunch of players around here, but that, that's still the truth. We're still, you know, those first rounds, first couple rounds, we can get away with some, uh, maybe a few darts at double that maybe uh, shouldn't have happened, but uh, we got away with them, you know, and, and that's just how it goes. That's just how it goes. Yeah, it's that different kind of pressure, you know, depending who you're playing, if you miss a couple darts, you could either have the positive mindset like, oh, I'll be okay. Or you get that mindset like, oh, I'm playing against Gerwin Price. Every dart that I miss, I'm screwed, mm -hmm. which you don't want to have that mindset. But it's kind of hard not to if you're missing a couple darts. And then, you know, from there, it just kind of goes downhill. 
You the doctor is so much more important. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct, sir. I feel you there. But I wanted to kind of ask you about what your plans were for Bullshot coming up. Do you have any uh, any things that you're trying to do? I saw that you were kind of doing a tournament setup, uh, maybe taking taking Bullshot on the road potentially. What what do you, what do you plan on doing? Uh, you know, I want to keep doing what I'm doing. So the last how long have I been doing this? Maybe two and a half years or so now, and Great. I've been strictly crazy yeah, man just it like, just goes by so quick right <laughs> i know like I, when i had two years i was like i looked at my videos like this video is two years old i'm like oh my gosh right. um but all i've done was youtube but now that i'm expanding and you know i just my brain's always going like what can i do what can i do what can i do and i'm starting to you know bring these ideas to fruition you know i started the TikTok, uh the instagram which are things i never really thought i would do but i realized that the audience i could reach and all because uh, I have a lot of ideas that might not be worth making a video, but maybe a 30 second TikTok. Uh, so I started my out school series on videos a couple years ago. And it's like, I cannot talk for a full video for this. So now that I've started the short form, con uh, short form content, you know, I can do a quick little out school, you know, where I, I give a number and I talk about the different ways to take it out. I can make a quick little 30 second TikTok and put that on there. So I've been focusing a lot on the short form content and yeah like i do want to do more stuff on the road uh i've been limited to a couple webcams at home but i went out and invested you know in a decent camera that i can take out so i would love to start just kind of doing some interactions at the tournaments maybe some interviews and my idea behind that is one to well just have more content but two i really want the public to see all these different players that we have you know so you have different people on the podcast and you stream a lot so you you know, talk about these players, which helps get their name out there. And I want to do the same as many dart players I can talk about just saying their name is going to help, you know, get these guys a bigger audience, which brings more sponsors, more money, and then, you know, just snowball from there. So I would love to do that. And also just kind of show people what tournaments are like, like I said earlier, some people might be intimidated to come out to a tournament, uh, you know, oh, I'm, I'm not good enough to play at this tournament or whatever. But it's not about that. Darts tournaments are about coming out and just having fun. It doesn't, I shouldn't say it doesn't matter if you win or not, because obviously it's nice to win, but at the end of the day, we throw darts to have fun. Yeah. So I just want to show the fun aspect of darts too, because, you know, I, I do get a lot of people that reach out to me and they're like, Hey, I've never played a tournament before. I'm really nervous. Like, do you have any advice for me? And, you know, I'm getting questions like this all the time. And I'm just like, Hey, like, just go out and have fun. That's my best advice for you is just go out and have fun. It might seem super simple, but if you focus on having fun, you'll have no regrets. Yeah. So I, I kind of went off topic there, but <laughs> no, I, I agree. I agree with you on that one. If you're, if you're, if you're having fun, you're not going to have any regrets. And no, I, I think that, um, I like what you're doing with the TikTok. We've uh, recently kind of started our, uh, USA darts TikTok up with just some useful, um, short content stuff as well. I think that that's, that's great. And I think that we need to attract more of those, uh, newer generations the younger folks to our game and, and that's just going to help us with those platforms that are that that strong i mean with TikTok and and instagram how they kind of i mean oof. I know how sometimes I get on my phone. My wife gets on to me half the time when I'm on my phone. Uh, I can only imagine how some of these youngsters are, too. So, uh, yeah, anything that we can do to kind of attract them to our game is, is, is good content. So kudos to you, yeah, sir. You, kudos to you. And you make a good point with uh, the age of TikTok. I guess I didn't really think about that, but TikTok is generally used by the younger people. Mm -hmm. And when they – maybe they have, like, no idea what dart season is. You know, I'm a, I'm a school teacher. And I have a lot of students that don't even know what darts is. They're like, oh, Mr. G, like, what do you do for fun? Oh, I like playing darts. Well, what's darts? <laughs> but <laughs> right? TikTok, I feel like a lot of those kids are on. So they're going to see it and they're gonna be like, oh, that looks like fun. Oh, to play darts, all I need to do is hang a dartboard on my wall and I can throw whenever I want. Yeah, that I'll easy. get a dartboard. That easy. Yeah. And then just yep. kind of, yeah, go up from there. Yep. Well, if you haven't, folks, head on over to Bullshot darts on youtube hit that subscribe button right there if you have not do so you need to it'll probably tell me i need to log in on this computer so i can't do it on here but i've definitely done it on my phone so anyway yeah make sure you've subscribed head on over to the facebook page as well and do the same i know nick would appreciate it 
and uh, look forward to you folks kind of digging into that content and learning some more from uh, Nick. So yeah, kudos to you there, sir. And now moving on to some future events or coming events um, for Steel Tip. We got Steel City coming up in July, Alien Open, and then uh, Music City. I'm excited for this one because actual we'll be streaming it. It's the uh, August 4th, 5th, and 6th weekend which unfortunately falls on that bull shooter ESPN weekend as well. So we hope you folks uh, aren't shy about keeping your TV on ESPN and watching on uh, your phone from a little Music City Classic on uh, USA Darts. We certainly want to do that one. Uh, and then uh, moving on to some soft tip, Partners Promoting Darts Daily Remote Tournaments, or DRTs, are always going on. PPD Nationals is July 16th. ADA National Championships is going to be July 27th through the 31st. Me and Ryan Mooningham will be streaming that one, so look forward to being in Las Vegas for that one. And then once again, that bull shooter on ESPN is going to be in August. So lots of events coming up. Get out there and play, folks. Get out there and play. Maybe you'll see this guy. Maybe you'll see me. You never know. Yeah, perfect. I love this time of the year. There's just so many big tournaments coming up. So, you know, it's always nice to have motivation to practice. It's like, you know, sometimes if you don't have tournaments coming up, it's just like, yeah, I'll, I'll just watch a movie tonight. But when you got tournaments coming up, it's like you got to get on that practice board and throw in, especially with that Music City coming up. I'm so excited for that one because they got the new hotel. They added money to it. It is going to be just one of the biggest tournaments of the year. It should be a fun one. I'm, on, I'm looking forward to being there and streaming the event. Um, the CDC event's going to be there as well. So that's open entry, I believe, to anybody. Um, is what I heard on that one. So yeah, if you're if you're anxious to test the waters out, come on by and, and do it. Let, let's let's have you there, have some fun, um, and I look forward to streaming that bad boy as well. So yeah, make sure you tune in on USA Darts uh, for both the ADA National Championships and the following weekend for Music City. So yeah, back to back weekends once again. Once again, and Nashville, I think, is a great tournament for people of all skill levels because outside of the darts, like Nashville is just an awesome city. So there's a lot of those players that are like, oh, I just don't want to go donate my money to play darts. Mm -hmm. First of all, it's a terrible mindset. Never have that mindset. Come have some fun, shoot some darts. But what's great about Nashville, it's like it's also a vacation. So if you're on the fence about going to Nashville, like please come out like we need it as a darts community. And I promise you will have the time of your life there. <laughs> uh, I can, I can agree with that one. I'm looking forward to my first time in, in Nashville, never been. So here we go. Here we go. Yeah, be ready. <laughs> you'll, you'll need a few days to recover when you get home. <laughs> I'm sure I will. I always need at least a day. Uh, that's good. <laughs> that's good. All righty, Nick. Well, that's going to do it for our show, man. That was a, that was a fun time. I appreciate you joining me for this one. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. You know, anything to spread the message for Dart, so I appreciate the shout outs and all that stuff and just, you know, being able to sp spread my platform out there and being able to do it on your platform. I love USA Darts. Like, I appreciate what you're doing. Like, I look up to what you guys are doing. So thank you so much for giving me the time on here, and I had a blast too. Oh, yeah, definitely. I had a good time. Other than a, a, a horrific opening, uh, that we'll have to still work <laughs> on, uh, I guess. Uh, panic, <laughs> panic sets in, you don't know what to do, I guess. But that is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah, I appreciate you joining yeah, it's us. It's a live man. show. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. A live show. Some people don't realize that one. But no, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to possibly doing more with you in the near future, um, especially hope, hopefully having you on at least a couple more times on our bull shooting podcast. I know you're doing great things for the game and, and, and thoroughly uh, enjoy, you, enjoy your content um, from my perspective. Uh, I don't know about others. I'm sure they enjoy it as well, though. I can't lie. I mean, who, who can't enjoy that? Who can't enjoy that? Thank you, man. I appreciate that. It, me it means a lot to me. Thank you. Yeah, no problem at all, man. Well, take care. We will see you later, buddy. And uh, you folks at home, enjoy this on Spotify or whatever podcast platform you enjoy. If you would like the audio version, come on over to Facebook and or YouTube, USA Darts. Like and follow us there. You'll get notified whenever we go live for our, uh, well, whatever we're doing, whether it be a podcast and or a live event. So come on over, stop by, hit that subscribe button. Appreciate you folks tuning in.